Hi, this is Josh Marshall, and this is the Josh Marshall Podcast, actually a special episode of the Josh Marshall Podcast. We had our regular one yesterday, and while Kate and I were recording the episode, I guess the news broke about these warrants executed against uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, at his place of work, at his at his apartment in New York City, and then uh, sort of in the in the first rush of news about that, it also emerged that Vicky Tunsing, who uh, a lot of us have, 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 you know, known about her for a couple decades, more than a couple decades, uh, DC power lawyer, a both spouse and legal partner of Joe DeGeneva, another kind of, you know, long time uh, GOP, lawyer power player uh it's still a little little un little unclear exactly uh was it was it a warrant of both of them was it just her was it her apartment was it her cell phone blah 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 blah. but but another warrant touching her um and just you know those those two are a duo both personally and professionally and they were both lawyers of record in what seems to be at the heart of this so it's hard to imagine it's one of them and not the other in any case that was uh that seemed worth worth a discussion on a few levels <laughs> uh you know i it, it's at, at at some level it there's been lots of smoke about this investigation so at one level, it should not surprise us that it is it is heating up. And one of the things that we that we basically pieced together yesterday is that, you know, this investigation began back in August 2019. So a long time ago now, well back into the Trump administration, into you know, way, way, way back under Bill Barr. So credit to Bill Barr, he didn't shut it down but he seems to have kept it on a pretty short leash uh i believe it was last summer the prosecutors wanted to get a warrant to i don't know if it was giuliani's cell phone or you know basically something like this maybe not quite as much but something like this and the appointees at doj said no not not doing that and this seems to have been this all gets pretty co- complicated. This seems to have been, again, in the summer. So it's a little unclear would that have arguably been in the window of time when there actually is DOJ, you know, policies. You don't, you don't, you know, you sort of, you sort of lean back on really political stuff just soon before an election. It doesn't seem so. So it seems like they kind of, as I said, kept it on a short leash. Now, uh, with Merrick Garland, seems like not so short. Or basically just letting the prosecutors, you know, follow the investigation. Now, as uh, I certainly will confess to, to a significant amount of uh, schadenfreude over, over this, um, uh, some... Uh, but both both uh, Schadenfreude that we that we should always be a little uh, bashful about admitting, and also just there's a lot of wrongdoing. We've been waiting for accountability for a lot of stuff for a long time. But one thing I want to do uh, at the you know first part of this episode is let's go back and explain, remind ourselves what this is about. There, there's two layers of this. One is that increasingly over the last decade or so, but especially after Trump became president, Rudy Giuliani has been going around the world to a lot of the most endemically corrupt countries in the world and, you know, putting out his hand, give me some money because I'm close to the president. You know, so so moving in the circles and playing with a lot of the sleaziest people in the world, a lot of big money. You know, what is he? What is he actually doing? Like, w- 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 you know, you hire uh, kind of a government or a 
plutocrat close to a government hires Rudy for, you know, millions of dollars. What are they getting exactly? You know, usually it's like some sort of like consulting on security and stuff like, come on. So there's a lot of stuff right there that is sort of the baseline. But what this investigation seems to be about is the Ukraine thing that got President Trump impeached the first time. Remember, you got to distinguish with President Trump, not the, <laughs> not the second time, the first time. And th this is one of those cases. <clears throat> this is one of those cases where the bad acts are really stunning in their in their in their depth and scope and complexity. Often the worst parts of what he did may not be what he is actually indicted for if he is indicted. But Rudy Giuliani got together with the sleaziest and most desperate folks in Ukraine and basically engineered an extortion plot in league with the president of the United States, you know, even now, a few months after Trump left, left office. This stuff is, is stunning to even relate, right? President's nominal lawyer with the previous scandal the Russia stuff from 2016, the guy trying to, you know, break him out of that, goes to Ukraine and engineers, again, an extortion plot on behalf of the president in league with the president, which ended up being to leverage U.S. military aid, congressionally appropriated aid, to use that as basically blackmail to have the president of Ukraine interfere in the 2020 election. Now, none of us, none of us are two years old, right? We remember this, <laughs> but a lot has happened since then. And I just want to remind everybody, you know, we think about, you know, the Russia scandal and the fact that on the way out the door, he tried to overthrow the government. And you had this insurrection thing. But the Ukraine scandal, that plot, in many ways, is more shocking, more grave in its wrongdoing than either of those other things. While he's president, after knowing everything, I mean, assume the, assume the best of Trump in 2016. You know, Russians are trying to work with them. He's kind of playing footsie, but, you know, he's sort of, he's new at government, you know, not versed on, on, on treasons you're not supposed to do, right? So it's kind of a little innocent. But by this time, everything's out. Everything's out about who was involved, who was involved in, 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 in Russia, in Ukraine. And he goes back to the well, basically. And Rudy Giuliani, again, the one who, takes money Congress has appropriated. And you didn't have to, you know, when this was a big scandal, everybody's like, you know, the suffering of Ukraine, you, Ukraine really needed that aid. They deserved that aid. That may, you know, that may be true or not, but that's almost not the point. Congress appropriated aid. They made the money available to give to Ukraine. The president, to rig the 2020 election, had his lawyer say to the president of Ukraine, you want that money, you got to get some dirt for my guy Trump. And you have to start basically, you know, indict Joe Biden's son, ind indict Joe Biden, blah, 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 blah. He's in there interfering in the progress of, of U.S. foreign policy, getting the, getting the ambassador fired. And while all this is happening, he's hooked up with these two grifters, uh, Ukrainian Americans, you know, U.S. nationals. I believe they're both U.S. At least Parnas was. I think the other guy was too. But at least uh, Ukrainian immigrants living in the United States, and they are the ones who are shepherding this for him. You know, Rudy's not. I don't think Rudy speaks Ukrainian, to put it mildly. I'm pretty damn sure <laughs> about that. I don't think he really knows jack about the country. Um, so he needs some handlers, right? Some people to kind of walk him. You know 
who does things for money kind of things. And along in that process, you know, while they are in the process of betraying the government of the United States in league with the president of the United States, they're also doing bribes and stuff for like oil contracts and various other just sort of like, you know, garden variety corruption, venal corruption. So the thing is, this is not some kind of technicality, white collar crime we're talking about. What Giuliani did, not necessarily what he will be indicted for if he's indicted, but what he did was, again, I still can't believe, I still can't get my head around how shocking it is that this happened, that it happened pretty much in broad daylight. We saw it happening. You know, in the lead up in 2018, in 2019, he's over there going to Ukraine all the time. What do you got for me? What do you got on the Democrats? What do you got on Joe Biden? What do you got on Hunter Biden? And he ends up in the process, in addition to all the stuff I've described, he hooks up with oligarchs, Russian and Ukrainian oligarchs, who work hand in glove with Russian intelligence. This whole thing, they went back to the same well again. And as you know, it got uh, President Trump uh, impeached. And so here we are. So maybe now he's, uh, I mean, it doesn't look good for him. And uh, I will say that, I was going to say, I don't think, you know, Merrick Garland's going to throw him a bone, throw him a lifeline. However, I will say this. Garland is a really by-the-books guy. I feel highly confident that he would not have let this happen. This, these, I mean, they call it a raid. That's a little, makes it sound a little more dramatic as it is. They just show up and say, hey, we got a warrant, you know, let us in. I am highly confident, based on what I know about him, he would not have let that happen unless this were really stitched up and really solid. It's just not in his DNA. I wish it were maybe more in his DNA. I don't mean that I want, I, I think he should play fast and loose, but we need accountability for the for the massive levels of corruption that happened under President Trump. Obviously, that's not something we've, we have spoken about many times. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let me remind you that the Josh Marshall podcast is brought to you by Grady's Cold Brew Ice Coffee, uh, the wonderful product that we all enjoy here at TPM. Great stuff. They have all these different uh, ways you can purchase it. You can get it online. You can get it at your local grocery store. And if you want to give it a try and you haven't tried it yet, you can get 25% off your first order at Grady'sColdBrew.com with promo code TPM. That's Grady'sColdBrew.com with promo code TPM. So, Kate, it caught it blindsided us. Did you have the same thing? Like after we stopped, after we finished yesterday, I look and I see on the on the on on the front page of TPM like breaking warrants <laughs> against Rudy. I'm like, holy shit, man! Well, how did we not know this in time for the pod? It's so funny because I think my experience of it was so strange because I was on the team that was spearheading our coverage of Biden's speech. So I feel like I didn't even really get a chance to dig into it too much and the the particulars until afterwards because you know we were doing some prep work and, and Josh and I were doing a lot of reporting with our kind of economic policy sources to get reactions in advance of the speech and you know talk to people on the hill about how they felt about the various proposals so it almost felt like you know there's this big news tornado going on outside the window that I was like I will get to you later. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Right well, you now. gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep your, gotta keep your focus sometimes. Yeah, you can't be, exactly. Can't be Doing some very scintillating capital tax schemes reporting right now. We'll get to that later. But well, there you, there you go. We'll do, a, yeah. we'll do another special episode about that. Yeah, but I've kind of I've gotten caught up afterwards, and you know, my I'll report to you that shockingly, Fox News does not share your emotion at this particular okay. raid 
Uh, I know that that's going to be an unhappy divorce for the two of you, but so. Now, are are, are they in the mode of kind of like, uh, you know, this is the the 10th thing in their in their news rundown or are they in full like, you know, deep state Biden, you know, going after Trump's lawyer mode? Well, they had to devote some airtime to um, lauding Tim Scott's rebuttal as the best speech ever delivered on American soil. So that took right. up some, some space. But yeah, there, <laughs> there was really no moderation in the reaction to this story. Uh, I have some quotes up here. Uh, Tucker Carlson said that Giuliani's, quote, core offense was being Trump's lawyer. During his segment on this, there's actually a Chiron that said, all caps, Biden admin sends a message to dissidents. So <laughs> we've got that going yeah. on. Uh, Wait, and that so that's a Chiron on Tucker's show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, ha- Sh- Hannity's take was it didn't take long for Biden to start using the Justice Department to go after his political enemies. Um very outraged that, quote, our justice system has been politicized. So that's a, a new breaking development. Now, are they, has, it, has it come up, has it come up in their coverage that this investigation long predates Biden? <laughs> Is, I mean, I, I wouldn't think they would emphasize that, but has that, has that come up? Because that did come up with our other friend, Matt Gates. that that was sort of, I, I think that that was something that has, uh, kept a lot of, for lack of a better word, sort of like n- not mainstream Republicans, but even kind of mainstream Trump people mm-hmm. kind of keep their distance. Like, yeah. Ooh, okay, Bill Barr started this investigation. I'm not sure I want to, I want to get too close because that doesn't, you know, that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Well, I think the other piece of the Gates thing too is the allegation is quite serious. And I think. You know, you even have these these super Trumpy people that are wary about associating with someone who is is charged with the equivalent of being a pedophile. You know, I think that right. even the most right. hardcore kind of want to keep their distance. Um, I think. Well, I, yeah, well, I think I mean, I would I you know, it's hard to compare crimes. I mean, the, the Giuliani thing, I think, is 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 quite grave, too. But but. Everybody knows that grown men, middle-aged men, are not supposed to be having sex for money or for anything with 17-year-olds. That's like, you don't have to be deep in politics. You don't, you know, that's just, <laughs> it, it is, it is, um, it's really obvious. It is, for good reason, pretty big taboo in our society, and it's just, you know, people have daughters, people are 17, you know, everybody, it, it just, it's immediate for everybody. No yeah. one needs that to be explained. Um, whereas, whereas with Giuliani, um, I, honestly, when it, I, it, <laughs> since it had been a while since it had been in the news, even I had to kind of like, okay, what did he do again? You know, so <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's, it's technical. And I think, I think one of the things that, um, one of the things about the Rudy story is that, we basically know, as I said, that, and, and the investigation seems to grow out of that whole Lev Parnas, you know, those two Ukrainian guys who I mentioned, Ukrainian Americans, but, you know, Ukrainian immigrants, uh, out of their thing. But as I mentioned, too, Giuliani's been like, y- you know, going to the biggest sleazoids in the world and say, give me money, right? So so there's a lot of things these people, these investigators could have found, right? Yeah. And, and, um, and so it is technical. Um, it's, it is, you know, white collar kind of stuff. You can't take certain people's money. You can't take money for certain things. You can't, uh, you know, inject yourself into the operations of the U.S. government, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, so yeah, you have to kind of bring people up to speed and it is, it, Gates has, has, as we know, tried to do it, but you can't really say the deep state found out I was having sex with, with 
high school girls and now they're coming after me about it because <laughs> because I'm fighting the good like it just doesn't you know it, it, yeah. it that just doesn't work whereas the whereas with Giuliani you say he was you know he was trying to fix things in Ukraine for President Trump and now this is this is the thanks he gets so well, it's it is it it's it's e- it's an easier lift yeah. for the Trump people to kind of come to his defense I think that's true and I think a piece of it too is that the Rudy Giuliani's of the world these like very wealthy kind of either individually high powered or people who are in proximity to very high powered they kind of yep. already live by a different set of rules than the rest of us. So I think it can be hard to tell what's actually illegal and what's just shady, rich, white guy stuff that they get away with all the time <laughs> anyway. Um, well, you it know, is, I, I, I think that, yeah, good. I, well, I was going to say already, I mean, finding opposition research is a mainstay of American campaigns. You know, there's nothing illegal about the practice right. there are illegal ways to do it but digging up dirt on your opponent is right. you know american is apple pie oh, so. absolutely it's not and, right. and and not um not it there is at least to a significant extent there is a social utility you know if 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 to the extent that researchers bring up real things in opposing candidates backgrounds that should be known that's actually that, that's that's not only not illegal it's not even you know bad necessarily and but i it is th- this is this is the as you say there there and this is something just broadly about um our society today that we kind of know that a certain class of people they kind of do all sorts of weird shit right mm-hmm. and kind of like stuff that at least really shouldn't be kosher sometimes it is not illegal but it's not good and and other times there's just this big gray area of things that uh are illegal but rich powerful people just do them and no one really says anything and and the the funny thing and this is something that I think we've we've all seen there's this pattern in which um, sometimes a Giuliani type person will have been doing this kind of stuff forever. And then they'll get involved in a scandal, which may have nothing to do with their sleazy behavior. Maybe it's a sex scandal that is, you know, purely consensual, whatever, or something. But they get everybody starts looking. And then prosecutors can go in and say, like, ooh, a lot of crime here. <laughs> you know, and 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 there's no uh you know, I'm a I'm a rich, powerful white guy. Covers for a lot, but it's not an affirmative defense. Once prosecutors get involved, you can you can go down. Um, yeah, I think something that's funny to me that uh, either Hannity or or Carlson, I, I don't remember. One of them said, um, you know. They're coming down on Giuliani for the crime of going to find out what Hunter Biden was up to, which is funny to me on like multiple levels. But one of which, you know, being what you said, I don't think anyone is like Giuliani hangs out in Ukraine because he's an aficionado of the culture, you know, a connoisseur (laughs) of the Ukrainian way of life. So it's funny to me that the idea that all Giuliani did was take his years of like hanging out in cigar lounges next to powerful rich men. And he decided he was going to dedicate his life to rooting out, you know, the nepotism of Hunter Biden. Like that premise is just really funny right, to right. me. <laughs> um, but yeah. And I also, and think- even, I mean, the, the, the thing is, yeah. I was, gonna say, oh, also I, just I was just going to say, cons- like, let's take, Ah, the lag, <laughs> the deadly okay. lag. You go, you go, you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that um, the consulting piece as well is like, you know, that I feel like that's a joke. What is consulting? You know, that's something that all rich guys do. They get paid a boodle for consulting when that's kind of cover for their wealth and power, their proximity to wealth and power, the access they can provide, you know. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna put their wealth and power to work for you, or at least that's the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think it's important to say that it might be sleazy, but if Rudy Giuliani had himself or, um, you know, or hired researchers just to go and see what Hunter Biden had done in Ukraine as a, as a private citizen, right? That is, that's not against the law. It, it, it's not at all. The key is, is that he was the president's lawyer and made really clear, if you want the president to give you any money for your military stuff, I'm the guy you need to work with. And so the point is, he basically, I mean, a lot of other stuff, but he, 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 as I said, created basically like a, like an extortion plot putting on the line America's relationship with Ukraine, which is obviously a very, a country in a very precarious position vis-a-vis Russia, for a whole complicated, long, long history that you don't need to have strong feelings about one way or another to understand what was significant about this. It's a very, it's a country that is very, very dependent on U.S. support. In in many ways, more U.S. support than a few hundred million dollars of 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 military aid. So they were able to. He was Giuliani was able to, as as Trump's emissary, basically say, you know, kind of like when Trump was on the phone calls with with the people in Georgia, I need the votes, you know, and and Giuliani was saying, we need stuff on Hunter. And, and if we don't get it, you know what's going to happen. So it's just, again, it's, 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 even now it is, uh, I'm, I'm stunned it ever happened. And I'm curious to see um, what, if, if Giuliani is charged with a crime, what those crimes will be. Because some of it could be as, minor as lobbying for a foreign country without registering which is which is what they what which is what they got uh you know a number of the sort of the small fry for in the Russia probe um and it's just uh i don't know a lot of other stuff but it would be curious there, there are there are much more major crimes they could conceivably go after those get you know po- possibly those are more um more you know more tenuous because as is often the case with Trump we don't really have laws that for that we're able to foresee a lot of this stuff it's so bonkers yeah i mean and one thing i'm so curious for that we'll probably never know is just the emotion of the Biden family at this news, you know, because we were talking about this a little bit off air, but the Hunter Biden attacks were gross and really mean and very felt to me an attempt to kind of kick Biden in his most vulnerable place, like going after his, you know, his surviving son when he's already had all these deaths in his family and, you know, it was a lot of it was ostensibly yeah. because of the Burisma stuff, but there was no restraint on the right well, about his drug addiction. Well, and, I think uh, that was that was the hook. That was yeah. the hook. I think that's what that's what allowed them to sort of start the conversation, and then you get into, I, I mean, the, the guys had a pretty bumpy personal life over the last right. over the last several years. You know, basically since his brother died, I, you know. I, complex topic what you know what was related to what but as we were also saying off the air there was to a great degree I think they knew once we can kind of get this on the radar there's a lot of messy personal stuff it just is like you can't that that you would never be able to say like hey we've got to talk about the fact that Joe's son has been kind of on a drug bender for the last couple of years, right? I mean, no one, that would make no sense. But if they got him into the mix, it's kind of there. And there was that moment in one of the debates when Trump, I think it was the first one, when Trump could not help himself 
where he basically just said like, oh, Hunter, yeah, he's got a bad drug problem. It just, just, just sort of like, you, you know, and we're these days with like the opioid epidemic, opioid epidemic and stuff, we're supposed to see people with drug addictions as victims of a bad disease, not like to be obviously the shame aspect of it is still very live in our culture, but you don't say that, right? You certainly don't say that as president of the United States about the guy's son, right? And, and, and I, I think it, if I'm remembering right, it actually, uh, I'm sure to his great chagrin, but, um, gave Biden a very powerful moment where he just said like, yeah, my son has, has really struggled with drugs and he's, you know, he, he's, he has overcome it and I'm so proud of him, which again, I think every, you really have to be kind of a monster not to, you know, kind of feel that with Biden, even if you, even if you're of totally different politics. Right. Um, and it, and it, it it just you know it showed that's 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 how Trump's predation, predation works, and I think didn't he? I haven't heard the interview that you were referring to. I guess it was on Pod Save America, mm-hmm. but I it sounds like uh, Hunter Biden's take was that this whole thing was just a way to knock his dad off his stride. Totally. That it wasn't that they were going to find something really. I mean, because even the things they were alleging about Joe Biden himself never passed any kind of laugh test. But was, you know, it's almost like kind of the as though they had taken his son hostage. Yeah, and they I mean, were going to hurt him because he's running for president. Like you're responsible for this, Joe. It wouldn't be happening if you hadn't made the decision to run for president. Yeah, I mean, I I remember just being pretty disgusted by it at the time and just the very thinly veiled glee of like, you know, the Fox News and the other people in in Trump's orbit that they had someone who was struggling so publicly to go after and embarrass and try to embarrass his dad um, secondhand. But yeah, the, the interview, I think, kind of just brought it home to me because he was just in such this grief spiral and this addiction spiral and survivor's guilt spiral and then having Trump's team think the best way to take Biden down is to go after his vulnerabilities you know the flip side of the fact that everybody knows Biden's a a good dad and a family man and has suffered these terrible tragedies you know go after the weak link which isn't joe biden himself it's his son so go after his son which is also you know just to say like how often have we heard the leave the kids out of this stuff you know that seemed to go right out the window when it came to this hunter biden who was not a politician who's, you know, the Burisma stuff, it's like, oh, what, he's, you're mad at him because he's making his career on his last name. First of all, Trump was still in office, so we had the Trump children to point to. But again, if you're gonna have a problem with nepotism of wealthy families in America, you're, you're gonna have a lot of anger to expend. (laughs) Right, 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 right. So do we know, I guess it's, it, it seems like there's not, to, I mean, we there was a thing with uh, Andrew Giuliani. Giuliani's son uh, gave this kind of very pugilistic statement outside uh, Rudy's apartment yesterday afternoon. There's another uh, lawyer statement that came out kind of overnight that was another one of these, you know, after Rudy prevented 9-11 and, and ended crime in New York. He, this is the thing, <laughs> you know, to kind of bringing in it 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 seems telling to me that that you know that may work on Fox News. That's not going to help you in a in a jury trial. So it it doesn't sound like um it <clears throat> it it doesn't sound like they've. It sounds like he's in trouble. Um yeah. and and that's also why I think it's quite possible that the stuff about the extortion plot as bad as it was 
it's legally complicated because the president can do lots of crazy stuff because of just the weird way our system works. And the president can tell people to do crazy stuff. And and it's certainly possible that you could bring a case like that and you get acquitted because it's complicated and 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 you know uh it's not clear cut and you get acquitted. So it's it's I just from my experience covering scandals and crimes <laughs> for a long time you can't work with those kind of folks and not involve yourself in all sorts of financial crimes and financial crimes as we saw in the um in the Manafort prosecution those are they can they can you can lose a jury they're complicated but they are there's no legal questions you're just not allowed to do that stuff it may not get prosecuted a lot but when it does people usually get convicted and they often end up spending a lot of time in prison and so i suspect we're going to see you know that kind of stuff bank fraud um bank fraud fraud uh possibly something about involving himself with the stuff with the ambassador who knows uh it'll be i'm not i'm 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 i am uh not not sad to see it happen but i guess we'll see how it develops <laughs> yeah, but so now we're gonna we'll wait till i guess in the, in the next episode we'll have an update we'll see if more is more has come out my, my sense is is that uh i get the sense this might move relatively quickly now I you know when they when they start doing that kind of stuff it's usually that they've they have a pretty good idea what they're looking for and what what their plan is uh so we'll see anything else we want to we want to share with the good the good listeners before we sign off Yes one reminder uh last week we called for your questions and forgot to tell you where to send them so there you go. If you have yeah. questions for us uh that's talk at talkingpointsmemo.com. Thank you so much to everyone who sent them in. And a lot of you have said very nice things in your email. And just want you to know that we very much appreciate it. It makes us feel good. So send us in your, yeah. your questions and cornucopias of compliments if you're so inclined to talk at talkingpointsmemo.com. Awesome. All right. And remember that the Josh Marshall podcast is brought to you by Grady's Cold Brew Ice Coffee. If you want to give it a try, you can get 25% off your first order at Grady'sColdBrew.com with promo code TPM. That's Grady'sColdBrew.com with promo code TPM. And uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. See you then. Later.